in organic chemistry, we spend a lot of time drawing molecules. And because we spend so much time drawing molecules, we have a lot of different ways to represent the molecules as we're drawing them. And this video is going to cover four of the five ways that we have to draw or represent organic molecules. The fifth way is actually pretty complicated, so it's going to get a video all of its own. Now, two of these methods you are already familiar with um, because you used them in general chemistry. The first method that we're going to talk about is the molecular formula. And this is the method that we use the most in gen chem because it makes the most sense in general chemistry. So you are very familiar with this method. And as you know, the molecular formula tells us the number and type of atoms in a molecule. But that's really all that it tells us about a molecule. It doesn't give us any information about how the atoms are connected to each other. So there's no information at all about connectivity. I'm going to use, for example, C, let's say C3H8O. So there's an example of a molecular formula. And in general chemistry, this is a totally acceptable form of molecular representation because we don't care that much about connectivity in general chemistry. All that we really care about is how many atoms are there and what types of atoms are there. So that's the reason that this is probably the most common form of representation in gen chem. But for us as organic chemists, this method of representation is oftentimes totally useless because we don't get any information about connectivity. So we use molecular formula very, um, very rarely. And we usually only use it when we also don't know anything about the connectivity in the molecule when the molecule's structure is an unknown to us and we're trying to figure it out. So um, also in general chemistry, you learned about the Lewis structure and that's method number two that we use for representing organic molecules. And as you know, the Lewis structure shows us everything. It shows all the atoms, it shows all the bonds, it shows all the lone pairs. We see everything. And this is a very descriptive way of representing a molecule because it just, like I said, it gives us all the information. Let's draw a C3H8O. There's, there's several different versions of C3H8O, but let's just draw one. Um, and maybe it looks like this. So we're drawing every single atom. We're drawing every single bond. We're drawing the lone pairs on the oxygen. So this gives us all the information about connectivity. Remember, connectivity is just the order in which the atoms are connected to each other in the molecule. And the Lewis structure is really descriptive gives us all the information that we might want to know. But as you know from general chemistry, the Lewis structure is really tedious. It's kind of a pain in the butt to draw, and it takes up a lot of space. And since we have to spend so much time drawing structures, it's not a great method for us to use as organic chemists just because it's very tedious. So we have other ways of drawing our molecules that provide us with just as much information as the Lewis structure, but don't take up as much space or time. And one of these methods is called the condensed structure. The condensed structure might, to you, it might look like a molecular formula at first, but you'll see pretty quickly that it's not. The condensed structure is going to show all the atoms and it is also going to show us the connectivity. But what it doesn't show us are the bonds or the lone pairs. 
So what I'm going to do is use this Lewis structure as an example for drawing a condensed structure over here. Basically, I'm going to draw the condensed structure of this molecule. When we draw the condensed structure, we essentially read the Lewis structure from left to right, and we read it in chunks based on the skeleton. Remember, the skeleton is the non-hydrogen atoms. So we read it in chunks based off of the skeleton's atoms one at a time. So here's our first skeleton atom, and here is its chunk, the stuff that's attached to it. And that portion of this molecule is a carbon with three hydrogens attached, which we will write as C H three. And we always write the skeleton atom first, and then the things that are attached to it, the hydrogens in this case, they come next. So now that we have that piece, we move on to the next chunk. That is the next skeleton atom, which is carbon, and the things, the non-skeleton components that are attached to it. So that would be a C. H2. Again, we're writing the skeleton atom first and then following it with its non-skeleton atoms. Then we move on to the next piece. The next skeleton atom is this carbon, and then we write its non-skeleton atoms, the hydrogens. So that's another CH2. And then last but not least, our last skeleton atom is this oxygen and its non-skeleton component, a hydrogen, so we would write OH. And there's the condensed structure. So it shows us, it might, like I said, it might look a little bit like a molecular formula at first, but it's definitely not. Um, it shows us the connectivity, the order in which the atoms are connected to each other. So it, it is significantly more valuable than the molecular formula because it's communicating information to us about how the atoms are connected. And this is much easier to draw than a Lewis structure. And sometimes the condensed structure gets condensed even more. So when you have repeating series of CH2s, sometimes you can put them together in parentheses like this, and that just sort of packs it down even tighter. And then um, sometimes when we are representing molecules, especially when we're talking about reactions, sometimes we might actually want to see some of the lone pairs in a molecule or some of the bonds in the molecule for one reason or another. We don't want to see all of them. We just want to see some of them. In that case, we could use what is called a partially condensed structure. And the partially condensed structure is a hybrid of the condensed structure and the Lewis structure. In the partially condensed structure, we are going to follow, in general, follow the format of a condensed structure. So it is going to be mostly a condensed structure but it is going to show some of the bonds or lone pairs or maybe uh, bonds and lone pairs, just sort of whatever we choose. When we're drawing a partially condensed structure, there is literally no rule about what you would choose to show. It's totally up to you as a chemist. You're showing the part that you want to show for whatever reason. So maybe we're interested in seeing the oxygen more close up. Like we wanna see the bonds around that oxygen. So we might draw a partially condensed structure that looks like this, where we're actually drawing out the bonds and the lone pairs around the oxygen. Maybe that's what we want to see. Or maybe for whatever reason, we want to see the bonds that are around this carbon right here. So maybe we would draw a partially condensed structure that looks like this. 
like I said, it's totally up to us when we're drawing a partially condensed structure um, to determine what we want to see. When we're using this method of representation, it's really for ourselves and we're drawing what we want to see for ourselves. Or maybe we just want to see those lone pairs on the oxygen. So maybe we would draw something like this. And it's just, like I said, it's totally up to you to pick and choose what parts you want to show.